cracking the code, third edition. We are now in the glossary on the Fs. Okay, fault. In civil law, negligence, want of care, an improper act or omission injurious to another and transpiring through negligence, rashness, or ignorance, there are three degrees of faults, the gross, the slight, and the very slight fault. Gross fault is that which proceeds from inexcusable negligence or ignorance. It is considered as nearly equal to fraud. The slight fault is that want of care which a prudent man usually takes of his business. The very slight fault is that which is excusable and for which no responsibility is incurred. Blacks first. Federal, of or pertaining to or founded upon and organized by a compact or act of union between separate sovereign states. As, number one, by a league for common interests and defense as regards external relations and internal sovereignty of each member remaining unimpaired as the Hanseatic League or the German Confederation. Or, number two, by a permanent act of union founded on the consent of the people duly expressed constituting a government supreme within the sphere of the powers granted to it by the act of union as the united states of america the constitution of the united states of america is a very different nature than that of the german confederation it is not merely a league of sovereign states for their common defense against external and internal violence, but a supreme federal government or compositive state, acting not only upon the sovereign members of the Union, but directly upon all its citizens in their individual and corporate capacities. Wheaton Elements, International Law, Section 52, page 78. From 1776 to 1789, the United States were a confederation. After 1789, it was a federal nation. See note. Note. Observe the last two entries above for what they reveal and confirm. Number one, that it was acknowledged no later than 1866 that people have both a private individual and corporate capacity this is the essence of the difference between true nature and trade name flesh and blood man and straw man and number two the several states were nation countries un unto themselves and referenced in the plural between 1776 and 1789 but following the unanimous adoption of the Constitution, Rhode Island was the last to adopt, May 20th, 1790. They were unified into a single federal nation and spoken of in the singular. FICA, Federal Insurance Contributions Act. See the curse of co suretyship in part one of this manual. Insurance, contribution, Ponzi scheme. Federal Reserve Note. The highest example of a commercial lien is a Federal Reserve Note, commonly found in commercial circulation, and is a commercial lien upon the labor and industry of all Americans by the international banking system. See the Fundamentals, Principles, and Processes of Commercial Law by Hartford Van Dyke. See Note. Note, the monetary unit for most of the world's trade, Federal Reserve Note, FRNs, is not defined in law dictionaries, though the former United States notes are, FRNs are commercial, military, private, Federal Reserve reinsurance script. They are permanently unfulfilled, irredeemable evidence of debt all Federal Reserve notes are loaned or borrowed into existence. 
It is a closed system and, as in the board of the game Monopoly, bankruptcies are inevitable. Only the principal amount is loaned and borrowed into circulation. However, because interest payments must be tendered, the only source for these payments is the original principal amount, thereby making it mathematically impossible to ever pay off the total debt of principal plus interest. More Federal Reserve notes must be borrowed into circulation in order to make interest payments and yet still be able to retire the principal amount of the original loan, thus pushing the borrower further into debt, a never-ending, ever-worsening cycle. Federal Reserve notes are promises to pay, as described above, but they are corporate promises to pay. There is no such thing as personal income. For a comprehensive technical treatment of the nature of Federal Reserve notes, see a memorandum of law in appendix. See Monopoly. All right, under military, pertaining to war or to the army concerned with war, Black Sixth. Note, the Amendatory Act of March 9, 1933 to the Trading with the Enemy Act of October 6, 1917, namely the Emergency Banking Act relief of March 9, 1933, defined the American people as the enemy legally of the United States government because of the U.S. bankruptcy, through which the private International Federal Reserve System became the government or creditor of the United States. See ramifications of bankruptcy. The nature of Federal Reserve Notes and Appendix. Under reassurance, sharing of risk among insurance companies. Part of the insurer's risk is assumed by the other companies in return for part of the premium fee paid by the insured. By spreading the risk, reinsurance allows an individual company to take on clients whose coverage would be too great a burden for one insurer to carry alone. Barron's Dictionary of Finance and Insurance Investment Terms, 1991, C note. Note, for a comprehensive treatment of how you have become the reinsurer of loans of Federal Reserve notes and a chapter of American history that is not taught in schools, see ramification of the bankruptcy, the nature of Federal Reserve notes in the appendix. Reinsure to insure under a contract by which a first insurer relieves himself from a part or from all of the risk and devolves it upon another insurer. Script a certificate to be exchanged for goods as at a company store. See Webster's note company store equals any place using. Federal Reserve Notes in U.S. Jurisdiction. F Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, the rules governing procedures instituted in the U.S. District Courts, Black Seventh. Federal Zone, C Note, Note, the terms in this state in uh, in this state, this state, and state, the two capital letter federal postal designations, CA for California, NY for New York, TX for Texas, FL, Florida, etc., and the five-digit ZIP Zoning Improvement Plan code. So the ZIP code signifies United States jurisdiction. See, in the state, Senate document number 43, 73rd Congress, First section, District of Columbia, United States. Per California Revenue and Taxation Code, Section 6017, 11205, 17018, and 23034. Feudal, enmity. Pertaining to feuds or fees relating to to or growing out of the feudal system or feudal law having the quality of a feud as distinguished from allodial. Blacks first, compare allodial. 
fiat, Latin for let it be done, an order or decree, especially an arbitrary one, Black Seventh. Fictitious name, a counterfeit feigned or pretended name taken by a person differing from some essential particular from his true name, consisting of Christian name and patronymic. With the implication that it is meant to deceive or mislead, Black's Fourth, see note. Patronymic. Name of the house or father of family, surname. Note, opposite of a true name, your all capital letter straw man trade name is a fictitious name created by the bankrupt corporate U.S. government at the time of your birth and wholly brought into separate existence via the birth record and document. You have mistakenly believed that the fictitious all capital letters trade name referenced and identified you when in fact it is only a piece of property of a corporation or corporately colored that is inextricably linked with you and your true name. The U.S. government presently holds legal title or original birth document, the fictitious name, but title is easily recovered by your redemption of the document of title, that is to say the birth certificate. Field warehouse receipt, document issued by warehousemen evidencing receipt of goods which have been stored. Such may be used as collateral for loans. Black sixth. Filled. A sphere of action or place of contest be a battleground. Note the term filled is a military term signifying battlefield. The county recorder issues a field warehouse receipt evidencing receipt of goods or newborn baby that have been stored or delivered in the warehouse or county. The birth certificate is a field, house, field warehouse receipt and as such may be used as collateral for loans. File number. <clears throat> File number means the number assigned to an initial financing statement pursuant to subdivision A of section 9519, see UCC 9-102A36. Filing office. Filing office means an office designated in section 9501 as the place to file a financing statement, see UCC 9-102A37. Financing statement. Financing statement means a record or records composed of an initial financing statement and any filed record relating to the initial financing statement, UCC 9-102A39. A document filled with the UCC office or in some cases the county auditor that details the money and or goods pledged by one party to guarantee the fulfillment of the obligation to any or to another party. Fixture filing. Fixture filing means that filing of a financing statement covering goods that are or are to become fixtures and satisfying subdivisions A and B of section 9502. The term includes the filing of a financing statement covering goods of a transmitting utility, which are or are to become fixtures, UCC 9-102A40. Fixtures. Fixtures means goods that have become so related to particular real property that an interest in them arises under real property law, UCC 9-102A41. Law of the flag. In maritime law, the law of that nation or country whose flag is flown by a particular vessel, a ship owner who sends his vessel into a foreign port, gives notice by his flag to all who enter into contracts with the master 
that he intends the law of the flag of that flag to regulate such contracts and that they must either submit to its operation or not contract with him black's fourth see note note the law of flag pertains to the legal and lawful import or use of a nonverbal symbolic notice defining jurisdiction and applicable law the significance in admiralty and maritime jurisdictions is stated above in quotes and identifies the current legal system in america this aspect of law more closely approaches the true essence of the nature and significance of names than any other in your courtroom the judge wants to recognize only your all capital letters flag i.e. your corporately colored juristic trade name flag fraud an international perversion of truth for the purpose of in inducing another in reliance upon it to part with some valuable thing belonging to him or to surrender a legal right a false representation of a matter of right whether by words or by conduct by false or misleading allegations or by concealment of that which has been should have been disclosed which deceives and is intended to deceive another so that the act upon it to his legal injury all kind of artifice employed by one person to deceive another a generic term embracing all multifarious means which human ingenuity can devise and which are resorted to by one individual to get advantage over another by false suggestions or by suppression of truth and includes all surprise trick cunning dissembling and any unfair way by which another is cheated black's fifth fraud vitiates every transaction and all contracts indeed the principle is often stated in broad and sweeping language that fraud destroys the validity of everything which into which it enters and that it vitiates the most solemn contracts and documents and even judgments fraud as it's sometimes said vitiates every act which statement embodies a thoroughly sound doctrine when it is properly applied to the subject matter in controversy and to the parties thereto and in proper forum. 37 American Jurisprudence, Second Edition, Fraud, Section 8. FRCP, Federal Rules of Civil Procedure. General, pertaining to or designating the genus or class as distinguished from that which characterizes the species or individual universal not particularized as opposed to special principal or central as opposed to local open or available to all as opposed to select obtaining commonly or recognized universally as opposed to particular universal or unbound as opposed to limited comprehending the whole as distinguished from anything applying to or designated for a portion only blacks first compare special general appearance as appearance or general purposes which waives a party's ability later to dispute the court's personal jurisdiction black seventh general intangibles General intangibles means any personal property, including things in action other than accounts, chattel paper, commercial tort claims, deposit accounts, documents, goods, instruments, investment property, letter of credit rights, letters of credit, money, and oil, gas, and other minerals before extraction. The term includes payment intangibles and software. CUCC 9-102A A42. Gentile is an adjective 
or pertaining to any people not Jewish. Now, a person who is not Jewish, especially a Christian, the Torah outlawed the issuing uh, the issue or offspring of a Gentile as that of a beast. Jewish Encyclopedia, 1901, Volume 5, page 621. See note, Goy, Goyim, Goods. Note, per the Jewish Encyclopedia and the Torah, first five books of the Old Testament, by reference, Gentiles, that is to say, non-Jews, are beasts. Good faith. Good faith means honestly, honesty in fact and the observance of reasonable commercial standards of fair dealing. UCC 9-102A43. See note. Note, good faith in sincere inner intent to be honest, truthful, and open in all aspects of a contrast, contract offered or being negotiated. Goods. Goods means all things that are movable when security interest attaches. The term includes three, the unborn young of animals. The term also includes a computer program embedded in goods and any supporting information provided in connection with a transaction relating to the program if, number one, the program is associated with the goods in such a manner that it is customarily considered part of the goods nor number two, by the becoming of the owner of the goods, a person acquires a right to use the program in connection with the goods. The term does not include a computer program embedded in goods that consists solely of the medium in which the program is embedded. The term also does not include accounts, chattel paper, commercial tort claims, deposit accounts, Documents, general intangibles, instruments, investment property, letter of credit rights, letter of credit, money or gas or oil or other minerals before extraction. UCC 9-102A44. A term of variable content and meaning all things which are movable at the time of identification to the contract for sale investment securities and things in action also includes the unborn young of animals blacks sixth c note all things which are movable equals newborn children quote at the time of the security interest attachments equals birth and execution registration of the birth document certificate identification to the contract equals newborn's footprint and informer's or the mother's signature contract equals birth certificate things in action equals human fetuses newborn babies unborn young of animals equals human fetuses according to the strongs according to strongs in goyim below goyim equals animals According to the Jewish Encyclopedia, in Gentile above, a Gentile is a beast. See Field Warehouse Receipt, Identification of Goods, Gentile, Goyim. Goy. Goyim, Goys. Often disparaging a non-Jewish person or Gentile, Goyim, a foreign nation, hence a Gentile, a troop of animals or a flight of locusts gentile heathen nation people see note note literally goyim means nation it is also jewish slang for cattle or animals per jewish thinking there is only two nations in the world the jewish nation and the gentile or non-jewish nation Grantor, or, or sorry, guarantor. One who makes a guarantee or gives security uh, for a debt. A guarantor, while a surety's liability begins with that of the principal, a guarantor's liability does not begin until the principal debtor is in default. Black seventh. Guarantee. 
a promise to answer for the payment of some debt or the performance of some duty in case of the failure of another who is liable in the first instance, black seventh, hold harmless agreement. A contract in which one party agrees to indemnify the other, black seventh. Go holder, the holder of a bill of exchange, promissory note, check, or other commercial paper is the person who has legally acquired possession of the same by endorsement or delivery and who is entitled to receive payment of the instrument. Person who is in possession of a document of title or an instrument or an investment security drawn, issued or endorsed to him or to his order or to bearer or in blank, black sixth, while respective to a negotiable instrument means the person in possession of the instrument is payable to the bearer or in the case of an instrument payable to an identified person. If the identified person is in possession, holder with respect to okay, holder with respect to a document of title means the person in possession if the goods are deliverable to bearer or to the order of the person in possession. UCC 1-20 holder in due course, a person who in good faith has given value for a negotiable instrument that is complete and regular on its face, is not overdue, and to the possessor's knowledge has not been dishonored. Black Seventh. In commercial law, a holder of an instrument who took it for value in good faith and without notice of any claim or defense against it, UCC 3-3021 and who can enforce the instrument free from all claims and personal defenses, UCC 3-305. A payee may be a holder in due course. A holder does not become a holder in due course of an instrument by purchase of it at a judicial sale or by taking it under legal process or by acquiring it taking over an estate, or by purchasing it as part of a bulk transaction, not in regular course of business of the transfer, a purchaser of a limited interest can be a holder in due course only if the extent of the interest purchased. Black six, compare bona fide purchaser, see note. Note, a holder is not necessarily the holder in due course. Per the first definition above, you are the only one who can be the holder in due course of negotiable instruments, bearing your straw man's trade name in commercial law. The phrase holder in due course signifies the operation and standing of one with supreme and irrefutable claim on a negotiable instrument. House Joint Resolution 192 of June 5, 1933. Resolved by the Senate and the House of Representatives of the United States of America in Congress assembled that A. Every provision contained in or made with respect to any obligation which purports to give the obligee the right to acquire payment in gold or a particular kind of coin or currency, or in, an, or in an amount in money of the United States measured thereby, is declared to be against public policy, and no such provision shall be contained in and or, or made with respect to any obligation hereafter incurred. Every obligation heretofore or hereafter incurred whether or not shall uh, such, let's see, whether or not any such provision is contained therein or made with respect thereto shall be discharged upon payment dollar for dollar in any such coin or currency which at the time of payment is legal tender for public and private debts. Public Law 7310. See note and note at escrow. Note. 
As a result of House Joint Resolution 192 of June 5, 1933, H.J.R. 192, a debt can no longer be, quote, paid because the only lawful payment can be made with gold or silver or coin or currency because it was made illegal. Since the new legal tender consists solely of private Federal Reserve notes, which are private commercial script representing debt, transference of such script between users merely discharges the relative debt between them, no matter how much exchange of Federal Reserve notes transpires between users, the debt incurred in the creation of those Federal Reserve notes still exists and interest is still owed. For the privilege of receiving Federal Reserve notes instead of United States notes in one's corporately colored trade name, one must pay a fine as the surety of the trade name called income tax out of the supply of Federal Reserve notes at one's disposal. To the owners of the Federal Reserve note, the Federal Reserve Bank, okay. the more Federal Reserve notes one acquires, for example, uh, that is to say, the more liability one accumulates, the more one is fined. Oh. Internal Revenue Service, unregistered foreign collection agency, private accountancy firm, and intelligence gathering unit of the Federal Reserve Bank collects the fines. How do Federal Reserve notes come into existence? The sureties of the trade names, owners of the birth certificate, that is to say American men and women, borrow credit via a pledge. How is the pledge actualized? By signing and promising to pay. Before the bankruptcy in 1933, money was backed by substance. After the wizard, see Wizard of Oz, conned us out of our unalienable right to pay debts with gold uh, substance, and hence our sovereignty, there had to be something else to back the currency. The bankrupt U.S. government fabricated a juristic mirror image name from our true name, see transmitting utility, inscribed it on our birth certificate, used the birth certificate as a negotiable document of title or security for the newly created trade name and hypothecated our body, labor, and property, see hypothecate, with the Federal Reserve in exchange for credit gave us transmitting utility benefits in exchange for use of our property, the trade name, thereby hooking us into the cycle and obligating us, our labor and our property as surety for the loan, all without our knowledge and without our consent. In other words, the bankrupt federal government has hypothecated everything you own, including your labor for credit, belief, air, Federal Reserve notes from the Federal Reserve. All wealth in the nation was nationalized, that is to say, you legally usurped, by the U.S. government, see Executive Order Outlawing Gold in Appendix, and Senate Document Number 4373rd Congress First Session. People as sureties for the trade name were converted into chattel property, the juristic straw man was wholly brought into separate existence on our birth certificate and other subsequent documents, such as a social security card. The political industrial society was then set up to run strictly via trade names. One can now enjoy the benefits of the American industrial society buying and selling only in the trade name of one straw man. Before House Joint Resolution 192, money represented substance. Now, money represents debt because it is issued as credit. How does one obtain money now? By getting a loan of credit from the creditors in bankruptcy. How does one get such a loan? Simply by signing one's signature on a promise to pay. The foundational instrument for all money, the endorsed document, is thereby created and the Federal Reserve Bank creditors issue the credit 
purely on accounting procedure against the pledged asset, that is to say you, your labor, and your property. The lender or the Federal Reserve Bank has no stake and no risk in the process. Since the basis of all money creation is the common signature and a promise to pay, this very promise can be employed for one's benefit when faced with a demand for payment or performance called a presentment and is outlined in the presentment handling section in part two of this manual. If one carefully reads through the legalese above in House Joint Resolution 192, one can see that no obligee, the one who is owed money, can require payment in a particular kind of coin or currency. The fact that debts can be discharged through the use of Federal Reserve notes does not also authorize an obligee to require payment in Federal Reserve notes and likewise any other particular specific currency. When an artificial person requires that you pay in Federal Reserve notes, he is in violation of How Joint Resolution 192 and acting against public policy. All right, moving along. Human being, sea monster, Ballantine's Law Dictionary, 1930. Human beings. Hypothecate. Hypotheca was the name of the Roman law and denoted a pledge or mortgage. Blacks first. One, to pledge to a creditor as security without delivering over mortgage. Two, to put into or to put in pledge by delivery as stocks given as security for a loan, to pledge something as security without turning over possession of it. Hypothecation creates a right in the creditor to have the thing pledged sold in order that the claim may be satisfied out of the sales proceeds. Barons third, to pledge a thing without delivering the possession of it to the pledgee. The master, when abroad and in the absence of the owner, may hypothecate the ship, freight, and cargo to raise money requisite for the completion of the voyage. Blacks first. See note. Note. Your body, labor, and property have been put in pledge or mortgaged, hypothecated to the Federal Reserve creditors courtesy of the U.S. government borrowing credit or you are Federal Reserve notes against your birth certificate. Your body, labor, and property comprise the substance or collateral that guarantees repayment of the loan. The trade name of the straw man is derived from the birth certificate, which has the name inscribed on it and is used as the security instrument in the transaction. Next, we, next video, we will go over the eyes and the glossary. Thanks for listening along. Cheers.